before? Because I saw this answer on a lot of pages, but I saw some people who were, mm, may maybe, kinda, not sure, okay? Again, let me repeat, as extension students, we need to be sure of that. We need to be like, yep, no, definitely, okay? What's something we could do? You're in an exam, you have finished the exam, this was early on in the paper, you're looking at it and you're like, hmm, don't know. How could you guarantee? Via content of. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> That's very helpful. I will deal with that after we answer this question. What could you try to convince yourself? Simplify it and see if you get the same. Okay, now, I'm going to go with that, but I'm, I'm going to just. This word. I'm going to avoid it as much as I can in this classroom because, as I've just established, it's an ambiguous word. Yeah, it's ambiguous. Uh, we will simplify it. In what particular way will we simplify? We've got a better, more precise word. It starts with an E. I'm going to expand it, okay? Now, we, um, we've looked at stuff like this before. So, as so long as you know how to distribute, you go X twice, you go the negative 4 twice, and then it should come out in the wash, yeah? Okay, just another thing. I think one of the reasons why people are like, hmm, not 100%, is because of these negatives. These negatives throw people off quite frequently. Okay. What I advise you do is you have something in your back pocket that you know is like a fact, you've memorized it, no question about it. If I asked you for your confidence, you'd say 10 out of 10 every time. My one is this. Because it's pretty hard to screw that one up, right? Now, when you've got a factorization for that in your head, you think, oh, okay, all positives here, all positives here. So if there's a negative here, you've thought of that pair of numbers, right? You've thought, oh, negative 4, negative 9. Does that mean this is plus plus or does it mean it's minus minus, right? So use examples that you know well to help you with ones that you don't know as well. Okay, I'm content with that. We give this kind of quadratic a name because its coefficient over here is 1. Does anyone know the name that we give to this? We call them monic because 1. Mono is Latin for one, okay? So this guy here is a non-monic quadratic. Now, there are at least three different ways that we could factorize this guy. Would anyone like to, not actually do it, but anyone would like to suggest for me? Yeah? Uh, the times the, um, numer the two times the total. Yeah, okay. So again, let me give you some language for this, right? Because we, we need to be more precise than do the thing and the other thing with the, don't do that the coefficient of x squared, multiply that by the constant term, that gives you 24, what do I, what do, I do with that? Okay, so I want to find factors of 24, okay? Now, we've already established, see what I did there? There's lots of factors of 24, which one of these do you want? You want this one, why that one? What made you go to that one? Okay, because they're related to the coefficient of x. So now I've chosen two numbers. What are you going to do with them? Someone hasn't said anything yet. We've had a lot of good contributions, very glad for it. But some people who are standing back, what am I going to do with 8 and 3? Replace the 11x with the 8x plus 3x. OK, good. Now let's just pause there for a second. Do you remember I said to you, there's at least three ways we could do this, okay? The first way you've already abandoned, that's quadratic formula. I'm glad you abandoned it because it's long and inappropriate and we don't need it in this case, okay? So you could have done, you could have done the quadratic formula, okay? We're doing it a different way now. What we're doing is what we call grouping. You'll see why it's called grouping in a second. Now, how many of you went to grouping? This is what the next line looks like, by the way. Um, something like... I think this is what you suggested. Something like that. Who would have done that? Who would have, that next step? Hands up, yeah. Okay, thank you, hands down. Who would have done something else with the eight and the three? Anyone? Okay, interesting. I'm gonna show you another way to do it. If we're here now, what would you like me to do next? Hmm. Now you can see why it's called Grouping, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group together pairs of terms. These guys and these guys, okay? What happens when I group them? What will I do with the groups? I will, because the whole thing's about factorizing. I'll look for a common factor here, and then I'll look for a common factor here. What's the first one? It's 2x, isn't it? So let's write this together. <laughs> he doesn't want to stay up. Yeah? You happy with that? What about the second pair? 
it's just a three, which leaves you with, and if you did it right, it should match. Yes? Okay. So now what do I do? Uh, one of the things I really like about this method is that it's kind of, it, you can't screw it up if you've picked the right numbers. For example, see this 8x and this 3x? What would happen if you did it the other way around? The answer is not really anything at all. Watch, if you, you've got this line of working here, just on the side here, maybe another color if you've got it. This is really, really important. Um, we distinguish between methods in mathematics, ones that are more resilient to error and ones that are less resilient, right? Some methods you've got to get everything exactly lined up, otherwise you're stuffed. Other methods, they kind of have a little bit of give and if you do something at the beginning that maybe wasn't what you were supposed to do, it still sort of comes out. What can I do here? Have a look at these two. Uh, I think all I've got is just an X. Oh, do you see what's happening? You see what's happening, don't you? Uh, what's the next factor? Mm -hmm. Which leaves you with? And I, I don't need to continue, do I? Okay, so that's nice, that's nice. Okay. Now, I said I was gonna show you one other way. You don't have to use this way. You don't even have to like it. But it's really important that you've got lots of tools up in your tool belt because different problems will be suited to different methods, okay? I'm gonna take the eight and the three. I'm gonna do something slightly different with them. I have some space here. Instead of doing what you've done, okay, I'm going to write this. Okay, I don't know if any of you have seen something like this before. Okay. Now, what have I done? I know at the front here I want a 2x squared by the end of this. Okay, So I've got the 2x and the 2x. I know it's going to appear somewhere. I just don't know where it's going to appear. So I put it in both spots. But of course, 2x times 2x and 2x squared does not make, right? So that's why I divide by 2. You see that? You see that's me compensating? Okay, now what am I going to do with my 8 and my 3? I'm just going to put them in anywhere I like. See that? Right? And now what can I do? do? Do you see? If I've done it right, if I've chosen my 8 and my 3 correctly, then this 2 should go into either this one or this one, or in more complicated examples, it might even divide a bit by both, right? Suppose this number was like, say, 6. You could divide this one by two and this one by three if it was appropriate based on the numbers. Okay? Instead, I just divide this one, which leaves you with the same factorization we got the other two times. You happy with that? Okay. 